guys, welcome to Geography Grade 11. We are starting off on Geomorphology Grade 11 and today I'm going to concentrate more on topography associated with inclined strata. I'm sure all of you are now on that topic in school. Topography associated with inclined strata. Now, boys and girls, when you talk about inclined strata, we are talking about tilted landforms, as you can see. Tilted landforms, as you can see in the diagram. And to make it more simpler for you guys, we are basically talking about landforms that you did in grade 10 that look like this. That are as a result of folding and faulting. When we talked about compressional forces that occur in the Earth's crust, when we have compressional forces that occur in the Earth's crust, it forms the anticlines, which are the upfolds. Or it can also form what we call form the synclines which are the downfalls these ones are the upfalls the anticlines so these tilted landforms topography associated with incline strata we are talking about tilted landforms tilted landforms that are formed as a result of folding and in real life, when you look at these landforms, we are looking at landforms that look like this, boys and girls, as you can see in this diagram. This is an example of a topography associated with inclined strata. Now, what are the processes responsible for formation of these landscapes? Processes responsible for formation of these landscapes, as I already highlighted for you, it's as a result of mainly folding and faulting that takes place when we have compression and tension within the earth's crust and we have anticlines and synclines forming. Now, when we have anticlines and synclines forming, it forms this land inclined strata landform talk about inclined strata like i said it is formed as a result of folding of strata now where does the strata come from remember this could be alternate lay alternate layers of hard rock beneath we can have soft rock So the strata refers to the layers of the rock. Now when we ever when we looked at inclined strata, there are two characteristics of inclined strata that you need to take note of. We should know that inclined strata has two slopes. It has a deep slope as well as a scarp slope. Now what does a deep slope and a scarp slope look like? Now a deep slope the deep slope represents the gentler slope. The gentler slope where we have a resistant rock layer. A resistant rock layer which means that it is, it is a resistant rock layer where we have slow erosion taking place. And in this diagram, this would be our deep slope. The scarp slope is the steeper slope. And it occurs where we have softer rock layer. Why do we have this scarp slope occurring where we have softer rock boys and girls because on softer rock that's where we have more erosion taking place so as more erosion takes place it creates a steep slope so the two characteristics here is that we have a deep slope and a scarp slope so what as well as we as we are looking at the characteristics and processes associated with development of homoclinical ridges and hogs back that's the next thing so one of the characteristics as i said is the deep slope and the scarp slope so inclined strata whenever we looked at inclined strata we always talk about what we call the homoclinal landscapes and with these homoclinical landscapes 
they are classified according to the angle of the deep slope. So whenever we look at these homoclinal um, landscapes, we have three types that we usually talk about. We talk about the kester, and the kester has the kester basins and the domes. We talk about the homoclinal ridge, and we also talk about the Hawksback ridge. And all these three, they differ in terms of the angle of the deep slope. Right, how do they differ? A kester. With the kester, you should know that the deep slope will range to 10 to 25 degrees. So the ridge with a gentle slope, so it is basically a ridge with a gentle slope, which is the deep slope and the scarp slope. And the deep slope this angle ranges to 20 to 10 degrees to 25 degrees. How can they be utilized? This one, the deep slopes does not have fertile soils. So most of the time they're used for forestry. And an example that I always give my learners about these casters is the Macalisburg Day in Captain when you're going to Johannesburg. And when we look at the a diagram here, this is the diagram that shows the deep slope and the scarp slope. The deep slope here, the angle is 10 to 25 degrees, and this what, what makes it a kester. And there you can actually see the resistant rock where erosion is taking place at a very slow rate, hence causing a gentle slope. So this is an, a diagram of a kester. Now, we said when we look at kester, we also have to look at what are called kester basins and what are called the kester domes. Now, also the kester basins are formed as a result of volcanic intrusions, but now we should know that the scarp slope faces downward. The scarp slope, which is the step slope, faces downward, and the deep slope is directed inward, which is the gentler slope. So, this is an example of a case that basin. The deep slope is inward, the scarp slope is outward. So this is how you need to identify it when you are in your examinations. Right, and then this would be the diagram also to identify also the deep and the um, Scarf slope in terms of a kester basin, and this also looks at a kester basin here in terms of the real world life. Now, with the kester domes, also they are formed from volcanic intrusions of a batholith, but now the scarp slope is the one that faces inward, and the deep slope, which is the gentler slope, is the one that faces outward. So it will look like this the deep slope is outward the scarp slope is the one that is inward so this is what we call a kester dome and this is also how you can identify the kester dome also in sketches and in real life this is what a kester dome would look like if you are identifying a kester dome the second one is a homoclinal ridge. Now, in terms of the deep slope, it is 25 to 45 degrees. An example also would be the Hicks River Mountains in Western Cape and also some rivers there, some mountains there at Makalis Cape. And we have rivers that cut through the ports through these ridges. So when we look at the diagram, this is an example of a homoclinal ridge. The deep slope is the one that ranges from 25 to 45 degrees there. And this is the scarp slope. And this is how you can identify it in the real world, as you can see nicely, boys and girls. And then lastly, we also have the hawk's bag, number three. The hawk's bag in terms of the deep slope, it is actually more than 45 degrees. And one of the examples that we give to is, is, is the 
hox bags that we find in Eastern Cape. So this is what a hox bag would look at. More than 45 degrees. It's actually more than 45 degrees. This would be a hox bag reach. And in real life, you can actually see in real life how the deep slope looks like. 40, more than 45 degrees. This is how it would look like in the real world. Thank you so much, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed the video. This video, grade 11s, will be beneficial to you. And you can actually see and learn more about what you're doing in class. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button and also share the video. Thanks. Bye.